Hello guys, this is Vivek and this is 25th tutorial of this Linux tutorial series. Today we are going to learn about Linux partitions. This is a very useful topic even if you are studying for exam or you are learning for yourself. Definitely this will be come very handy and when we are actually started working on Linux system you might be uh, you might be dealing with such situation where you need to partition your disk or drive space. So let's see what it is. So this tutorial is basically a theoretical tutorial. We won't have hands-on on this one, but in next one, that will be a hands-on tutorial. We'll sh I'll show you how to use different commands to do the partitioning. So let's start. So what is a partition? So partitions are the logical units created on a drive of a specific size. Just like Windows, Linux also, you have different partitions. Cool. Now there are various usage of partitions. It's used to specify limit on a disk uses for a user or an application data. Part of virtual mem memory, that is swap, can be created to assist physical memory. It's also used to segregate operating system data from user's data. It, it increases efficiency of backup and imaging tools that can be increased by creating smaller size partitions. So if your main partition or the partition is very big, the efficiency is less when, as compared to when it's small. Multiple operating systems can also be installed using multiple primary partitions. Cool. Now how disks are used? So disks are used in three ways, raw disk, file system, and block device. So raw disk, it is a newly created partition or a fixed size without any data or file system in it. Now what is file system? A type of file system like ext3 or ext4 or xfs or vfat or swap is applied on a raw disk. This is when it becomes, a this is called formatting. So when you format a disk, you select what kind of file system you want to set. Uh, have on this drive. After formatting the raw disk, it is converted to a file system. Now block device. So a new directory is created in a Linux system and attached to the file system. So this acts as an access point or we call it mount point to the partition. This process is called <coughs> mounting. So after mounting the pi uh, partition, becomes it becomes capable of managing data like read or write operations. Such devices are called block devices. So once again, very first time when you create a partition, it's a raw disk. Then you select the file system, and or like you format it, and then you mount it to a Linux system. You create a directory and mount that directory to a particular partition. That's called mounting. Cool. Now, representation of hard driver and partitions can be shown or you can see in this figure. Like if there are varying, various kinds of disks, SATA disk, IDE or virtual disks. So in SATA or SCSI, you will see the partitions are shown as slash DEV slash STA. So DEV is for devices and STA is for SATA SCSI devices. Similarly, for other partitions, you'll go on SDB, SDC and so on and so forth. Similarly for IDE, the devices are named like slash DEV slash HDA slash DEV slash HDB and so on and so forth. For virtual drives, <coughs> the character changes from H to V. So it becomes slash dev slash VDA slash dev slash VDB and so on and so forth. So drives further can be broken into like if the drive is slash uh, DEV slash SDA. Uh, it can it, it will be broken into st1 st2 st3 and so on and so forth so partitions can be managed using mbr partition scheme that is master boot record partition scheme or gpt partition scheme we'll see that what they are so mbr partition scheme is nothing just master boot record partition scheme why because we'll see it's stored at the first sector of hard drive that is master boot record. It's from it's the starting point of a 
pin of a hard drive on spiral disk where it starts from. So it's it consumes 512 by 12 bytes of data. The out of which the first 446 bytes is it, it contains bootloader and kernel info. Sorry for the typo here. Seven. So next 64 bytes contains partition table information. And the last two bytes is used for validation check. Okay. F disk command is used in MBR partition scheme. You can create four partitions. You can either create all four primary partitions or you can create one primary partition and three extended partitions. Out of these partitions, theoretically, you can have a maximum of 15 logical partitions. Now, if you are going with a uh, GPT um, partition scheme, that is, it's the full form is GUID partition scheme or Global Unique Identifier uh, Partition Scheme. It's they you can contain you can create 128 regular partitions. So in MBR, the maximum size limit of per partition was two terabyte per partition, while in GPD the max limit is 8 zeta byte per partition and if hardware or firmware can support then it can go up to 64 zeta byte the command used is g disk here instead of f disk and it can it's able to handle multiple failures like <clears throat> in mbr there is a single point of failure like if a master boot record gets corrupt, corrupted it's gone while in gpt there's multiple point where it stores the data like it stores first sector and it uses first sector and last sector where a backup copy is kept cool so this that's all for now guys uh, this was the theory i wanted to let you know now in next tutorial we'll start the hands on on this hope you learned something new stay tuned and do subscribe to my channel for further updates